Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about my giant Defy road bike, which I got at the very end of October. October 28th is when I actually brought it home. I uh, didn't get to really ride it a lot for about a month and a half afterwards. And I wasn't going to make this review until I hit a thousand kilometers, which is 621 miles and a little bit of change. Uh, and right now I'm at about 560 miles on this bike so far. And uh, so far, up until the other day, until Sunday, it was awesome. Beautiful. It rides great. It's, I, I, I loved it. Um, and now I have had an issue, which we're going to talk about here. So I'm going to move the camera to this odd angle and pull the bike a little closer so we can take a look. I'm going to kind of do my review as we look at this thing. Here we go. Where do I stand? This is so awkward. All right, so we'll, we'll do it here. Now, um, this is a 2019 Giant Defy. Again, I got it toward the end of the year because I guess the new models were coming out, so the prices had dropped on this a little bit. So um, I got a really nice deal, which uh, is good. Still not cheap, but uh, in relative terms to a carbon bike, it's a, it was a good price. Um, and so far, everything has been fantastic. Uh, mechanically, no problems. The ride is just beautiful. Uh, this is my first road bike that has had disc brakes. All my other road bikes have had rim brakes, and I've heard really, really, really mixed things about disc brakes on road bikes. So I've kind of like, I felt like I was taking a leap by getting a, a disc brake road bike, but it rides beautifully. Um, and there's some things to consider with that that I can get into in another video, uh, because I think some road bikes with disc brakes still are terrible, even though they're very, very nice bikes, they just don't work well with disc brakes. And that's, again, it's a topic for another video. But uh, long story short, um, super happy with the bike, but last Sunday, I did a 55 mile ride, rode all the way to the PCH, shot to the beach and back home, and about a mile from my house, I caught a pothole with the back wheel. I was able to avoid it with the front wheel, just barely, and the back wheel caught it and hit it pretty hard. And I thought maybe I got a flat tire. Real briefly, I looked to see if my tire was popped or anything, and it wasn't. This has tubeless tires, which I think is the reason, because other road bikes I've had, anytime I've had a hit like that, hit a pothole or a manhole cover, or something that was just an obstruction in the street, I've almost always popped a tire if I've hit anything remotely hard. Oh, this didn't pop the tire, which is awesome. So I looked down, tire was good, and I was like, all right. Rode the rest of the way home. I was only going about 15 miles an hour at the time and didn't think anything of it. Got home, did normal stuff, took my picture with my thumbs up that I take at the end of every ride um, and just did continue on with my day. Next day, I go to clean off my bike because it was got pretty dusty over that 55 miles. And I am wiping the bike down and all of a sudden the rag that I'm using snags right about here. And I had the water bottle on at the time, so I thought it caught between the water bottle. And what it had done is it caught on a crack in the frame. So I have a crack right here on the seat tube. It goes all the way around the back like this. And I quickly noticed there's another crack right here on the seat stay. And there's a little bulge in this seat stay on the other side, which are, um, it's probably a sign that this got flexed a little too hard and it may have not cracked the carbon, but it definitely Kind of affected the paint it probably affected the carbon a little bit too um oh, so i was just so bummed i was like oh, i just broke my basically new bike it's six months old but i've only haven't ridden it a ton so very uh not happy about that and at first i thought well i hit a pothole hit it pretty hard kind of felt a little responsible for it but then thinking about just as a cyclist and how many times you hit things in the street that are just kind of unavoidable and how those forces should be accounted for I'd imagine by the frame company. I, I only weigh 140 pounds. So, you know, if this happened to a person that was bigger than me, uh, you know, there's, I'm guaranteed there's people that are 200 pounds that are riding this same frame. And if they were to hit something like this and have the same issue, uh, it could be pretty catastrophic. Now, when I first looked at it, I couldn't quite figure out why it cracked where it did. But um, when you examine the, the geometry of the bike, it makes sense. So if, as you can see, the seat 
uh, seat stays here are lowered a little bit. A lot of bikes that come right up to uh, meet up with the top tube, just like this, make a triangle. But on this bike, they're lowered down. Now this helps add to the suspension effect of the bike by taking some of the forces that the back wheels um, absorbing and putting them into the frame here as opposed to the stiffest part up here. Now, you know, again, the bike's made for long distances. It's not really uh, like a sprinting bike or anything like that. It's like a distance bike. So um, it's made to be more comfortable. Another thing this does is you can see the seat here. If I push this, there's flex that goes through the frame right here. Um, this whole thing becomes effectively a lever. So you, the top tube is your fulcrum. If you know about leverage, there's effort, there's your fulcrum, and there's your load. So in this case, we have two points of effort, which is the seat and the uh, seat stays. They both seat stays are gonna push this way, and the, um, the seat is gonna push back this way, which causes this to flex. So this is gonna act like a bit of a spring right down here. Now, if I bend this a little bit, you can see the flex. I'm not putting much weight on it. Maybe I'll do a close up here, insert. Um, you can see that there's flex. This is normal. This is The bike is made to do this. But apparently when I hit that crack in the pavement, in the pothole, it causes it to flex too hard. And I don't know if there was like a bad carbon layup or I just exceeded the forces of the bike, which does not seem like a thing I should be able to do with my weight. Um, but I have a feeling that the give out was right around here somewhere and this flexed a little too far, which caused these cracks up here. So you can see, like the only way I can really get these cracks to buckle and pucker where they did is by pushing down on the seat. Because on the bottom here, there's really no damage to the bottom of the seat stay. It's more a puckered effect on the top from it being pushed, same on the back here, it's puckered all the way around. So it's unfortunate. Now, apparently Giant has really good warranty on their frames, even their carbon frames. And then if they determined that it was crashed or whatever, they still give pretty big discounts on a replacement frame. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm about to take this to a Giant dealership and see if I can get my frame replaced because um, uh, I really like this bike, really like this bike. And I feel like it's such an unfortunate thing to make a review where I'm kind of like, oh, but it failed on me. So I don't know, it's a bummer. But um, let's do some close-up shots here so I can give a little bit better demonstration of what's happening and take a look. All right, guys, you're coming with me. I don't know if I'm gonna edit this because why, why edit it, right? Do one video, put the tripod down, lower the stuff. Oh, awkward angles. Thanks for coming. To, thanks for coming on the ride with me. All right, so put it here like this. I think that works, right? So this is this is where you'll see if I put some weight on the bike. Like I was saying, like this is the lever. Here's the fulcrum. You have effort coming from this direction and effort coming in this direction like an arc and then this part of the frame acts as a spring and that's where that crack is right here i'll get a close-up of it but if i push if you see how the how it flexes and the flex focuses literally right where the crack is it's like it's where it's uh kind of sucking that up i'm not pulling my full weight at all by the way guys so this flex on here i'm not even coming close to lifting myself off the ground just to give you an idea of how much this frame flexes Again, it was designed to do this, so it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's supposed to do this, but, and, you know, this thing makes the bike really, really comfortable to ride over long distances. Like, you know, 55-mile ride is, feels like nothing. My body was not beat up at all. Like, beautiful. So, again, unfortunate. So, yeah, that's, that is a bummer. Let me see if I can flip this camera and, um, we will take a close look at how these brakes look so I can sh explain what happened here. So let's see here. Coming around. All right. So you can see we've got a crack here. It's along the top. Yep. Focus. And it goes, it buckles on the top. And on the bottom, you can feel a little bit, but it's not, there's not much there. And on this side, you can't really see it much in camera, but there's 
a little bit of a buckle on this one. You can feel it with the, with the finger. Let me see if I can get the light on it right. You can kind of see it right there. The light's sort of catching it. So this one feels like it didn't get as affected as much, but this one goes all the way around the back of the frame. And this side looks a little more dramatic because some of the paint had just come off after uh, I was trying to figure out what happened there. But it makes me wonder if this is kind of more where it failed is in this area. But um try to get the sun off of it. Sorry guys, focus. But it goes all the way around to this side here, like that. It's all along, it's basically along the back of the tube, like I said, where the where the tube is supposed to flex. Which sucks real bad. Um, and let's turn this around. And then we are going to talk a little bit about how carbon breaks. Because um, those of you guys who have been on my channel for a long time know that, you know, I don't really talk about cycling uh, almost ever. So what I usually do is I make stuff. I make props and uh, all kinds of things like this. So I've worked with composite materials for quite a long time. Uh, fiberglass, epoxy resins, uh, etc. And worked on surfboards before that, which is fiberglass and epoxy based um, laminates. Basically, really similar to how a bike is made, except instead of. Sorry for the tripod nonsense here, guys. Um, basically, really similar to how a bike is made, except instead of a Kevlar based. Instead of a Kevlar based mat you're using a polyester based mat but basically the process is really really similar now there's some things that you can see when these get broken so basically like a fingerprint to like what happened and there's uh impact impact breaks where like if you have this is your outer layer here um, of your composite laminate when it gets hit it'll crack in like this and the little fibers inside will push in inward and then they don't come back out. So you'll have a, a dent with a crack and then it's, you can't get it straight back out. Or it'll break free and then those fibers will be loose on the inside and they won't come back out because um, you know it's pushed in. You'll see a, a good crack and then one side of the crack will be knocked in. That's usually the sign of an impact. If you have a, um, a torsional kind of break, like you've flexed it too hard, you'll either have the outside face break and it pulls away like this and when it goes back together, your fibers will stick out kind of like this they mesh together um, and you can see that it's been flexed and usually the other side will have some kind of crease but um, it'll, you get this kind of effect and then the compression crack which is what you're seeing on my bike is where the two sides get pushed together really hard and they kind of flex outward like this and they get a crack right along that point where the flex happened so as you can see in that video uh, on my bike it's all like a compression crack it goes all the way around which means it was happened because there's too much force on that outside edge of the tube anyway oh, what a bummer so hopefully i'll have a, a replacement frame soon and then i can get on to doing the, like a proper review of this bike and i'm hoping that this was just a, a defect in this single frame i can't imagine that the engineers wouldn't account for this kind of thing happening regularly it's like if you've ever ridden in a group ride or just been on um, a road bike in general, uh, the chance of hitting a manhole cover or a bump in the street or offset pavement is really high. And, you know, to hit a thing and have it break your frame is kind of not acceptable in my opinion. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on the matter. Um, outside of that, I really liked the bike a lot. Really liked it a lot. Liked it a lot. So hopefully the placement frame will come in and I'll get back to my wonderful riding schedule but uh anyway figured i'd let you guys know where it stands because i was just a few days away from doing the proper review which would have been glowing glowing a shame uh thanks for stopping by guys i'll be back soon later